barbecue fan. Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Today, the weather's finally moderated here in Texas on the Gulf Coast. When it gets cooler, that's the time of year we drag out the gumbo pot. So, I've got a special treat for you. We're gonna share it with you, my family's version of gumbo. I've got my two daughters, they're both great cooks. They're gonna walk you through it. They'll show you exactly how we do it. You're gonna love this recipe. Hey guys. Hey y'all. I'm Christy. And I'm Kellen. And we're Paul Daddy's Daughters. And today we're going to be making a quick version of gumbo. And it's gonna be one that you're gonna to wanna to make immediately. I'm telling you, this is great stuff. So you ready to get going, sis? I'm ready. Okay, if you'll turn on your burner, cause sure. you know I can never do that right. All right, we can get that on high. Okay, and I'm gonna let you take that one and I'm gonna get the All other right. one and we're gonna pour in and this is two cartons of chicken broth low sodium. So we did one 48 ounce and one 32 ounce of the low sodium chicken broth. And now for our secret ingredient, this is Doge's root. This is made in Beaumont, Texas. That is where I'm from. So um, a lot of people I know that are from that area, when they come back home, they stock up on this stuff because this, is, this cuts out a lot of work. Can you buy that online? You can, you okay. can buy that online. Awesome. And so when you first open it, you'll see it's kind of separated. So that's one thing you're gonna to need to do is stir. All right, so we actually have to put some muscle into this to try to get that roux and the separation all mixed together. It's gonna to take a little bit of work, guys. That's right. And I tell you, we're gonna probably use most of that jar, but this is taking out 30 minutes or more sitting there and making a roux from scratch. One thing that my mom said is like, make it one time, say you've done it, and then just always do the dough gaze. And we've never gone wrong with that. Okay. So make sure we've got enough roux and we can always, you know, add a little bit more gotcha. roux or chicken stock. Th that's, it's forgiving in that way. It is very possible to burn your roux if you're not yes. standing here. If you walk away. Do not walk away. You better turn that heat down because it will burn. You want to do that just a little sure, bit? Sure, yeah. I'm going to turn, I got water dripping here. Now, if you add more, is it just going to make it richer? Yes, okay. so the more you add, and it's got that nutty flavor okay. that gumbo's known, known for, so you want to make sure it has enough of that. So now the next step is to add our vegetables, and this is onion and bell pepper. Okay. And we actually got this locally from HEB. HEB is one of our regional uh, grocery stores. It's huge, it's fabulous, they have fresh ingredients. These are chopped up, all ready for us. Yep. So again, this is a quick recipe, so we are taking many shortcuts, but we're not taking shortcuts on flavor. Mm. This is in the produce section. It's Creole seasoning mix. Let's go ahead and we're gonna dump that all in there. All right, there we go. So we got that in there and then we're gonna give it a good mix. We're gonna let that soften just a little bit. Okay. And then it is time to put some seasoning in. Okay, awesome, that sounds good. We'll let that soften a bit. So now we're gonna add in our Louisiana hot sauce. Oh, stuff's so can, good. Oh, this stuff's good on everything. Love it. So we're gonna add this in, and of course, we'll keep testing it. And okay. I tell you what, everywhere I go in Southeast Texas, this is on the table with the filet with your gumbo because you add it and you get it the way you like right. it. Right. And I like things spicy. Me too. And I think, you know, always good to have lots of pepper. Okay, I'm gonna add now in a little bit of gumbo filet. Now, what is this exactly? So this is really for flavor? Flavor and thickening. All right, now it is an important ingredient. You cannot leave that out. So we're gonna let these simmer probably about another 10, 15 more minutes. Okay, and we're definitely gonna need to add more salt and oh, pepper absolutely. as we taste it and see what we need. Yeah, so I was just gonna say, in my neck of the woods, people actually serve this over potato salad. Really? And I've never had it. I always do rice. That's I kind love of love potato salad. I know, I do too, but I just, I yeah. don't know. I've never done it, but everywhere we go, they serve it over That's potato awesome. salad, so it's kind of cool. All right, maybe we'll have to do a potato salad recipe. Now, I, this recipe does not have tomatoes in it. Some do, and that is the Creole version. Okay. But it's time to test. All right. Okay, we'll put some in a little bowl here so it wouldn't be quite as hot. Oh, it looks delicious. Oh gosh, it definitely needs need some salt. seasoning, lots of salt. salt. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and add our proteins. Okay. And then we'll keep testing it. Did you boil this? What did you do? This is another shortcut. Okay. This is a rotisserie chicken. Yeah. So that saves, and you can do so much with rotisserie chicken. So okay. this is just another step. Perfect. If you want to boil a chicken, boil a chicken. Okay. But hey, I'm all about this. 
We're busy, busy people. Yep. So here we've got green onion, Beasley sausage. You can use any sausage of your choice, but I mean, I personally really like this uh, particular one. Is there a favorite that you have, Christy? My husband's a deer hunter. We have deer sausage and um, that's my favorite. Okay. I too like some deer sausage, but <laughs> just poor Bambi. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. Got our All sausage right. in there. Okay. Give it a little stir. So let's do another little okay. taste. Sis. Okay. Oh, mm. it's perfect. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That's delicious. So now we've got everything in here, sis. Mm -hmm. uh, what's our next step? So I think we'll let this go about 20 or 30 more minutes. Okay on low, just let it simmer because you Got want it. those flavors to start developing. Right. And then... Well, I guess we're going to have to refrigerate it because the mm -hmm. party's not till tomorrow. That's I personally like to add shrimp to this gumbo. I know it's not your traditional, you know, Cajun Louisiana gumbo to have sausage, chicken, and shrimp in there. Mm -hmm. But I would like to go ahead and add that in tomorrow just so those don't get real gummy. Mm -hmm. And then we can do our rice or potato salad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whatever. That's right. Whatever so. we're feeling like tomorrow, we'll do that. This gets better. Second okay. and third days. It's good now. It's going to be even better tomorrow. I'm excited. Me too. All right. Great job, sis. Yeah. Yay. You know, sis, you were talking about throwing in the shrimp is not really traditional. Right. So my husband, when he was growing up, his grandparents were born and raised in Louisiana. They would have a duck head in oh, there, like the whole, no. they didn't, like that's why it's a gumbo. Like they put in the feet, everything. Oh, wow. And so, no, this is not traditional, but it's evolved over the years. And so I think putting the shrimp is a great idea. So did you have to put your foot down? <laughs> I did, I did. I said, we're not going there. So oh my this is exactly what we do too. We love to add the shrimp in too. So. A lot of people add crab and oh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, really, it's your gumbo. You can do whatever you want, right? Gumbo is the melting pot of stuff. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Good job. <laughs> All right, so today's the day of the party. It's party time. All right, so now we're going to put the final touches on our gumbo. It's been in the fridge all night. Mm -hmm. All the flavors have uh, melded together. Mm -hmm. So what's our next step, sis? Okay, now it's time to put in the shrimp. Okay. So did you catch the shrimp this morning? I did. <laughs> So here's their shrimp. And I'm gonna put some hot sauce before you pour those in there. Okay. Just to give it a little, a little extra flavor on the shrimp. All right, so we got some more Louisiana. Yep, a little more Louisiana, a little bit of salt, and then you can pour those in there. All right. Then when they start turning pink, you know they're ready. We don't want to overcook shrimp for okay. sure. Well, and that's also why we didn't put those in here yesterday because they tend to get a little gummy if they're sitting in there too long. We just wanted to be fresh for, well, and plus I had to go catch them today. That's right, yeah, so. yeah. So we had to get the get all that done. But now this isn't gonna take long at okay. all and it's gonna be fabulous. We gotta get the rice cooked, okay, and then we'll be ready to go. Awesome. Now we tweaked it a little bit, added a little bit more broth in there than we started with. It's really just, I mean, it's whatever flavor you like. More salt, more roux, whatever you need. That's right. You can grab the rice that we cooked oh, too. Oh yeah. Typically you can put the rice on either before or you can put a little bit in now. That is so good. You're gonna have to taste that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Well good, look we've got a whole pot full for the party. Um, hopefully we'll have some leftover. You can see that really did not take much time at all. It was easy peasy. I don't even really like to cook and I can definitely mm -hmm. do this. Well, thank you all for watching. We hope that you learned a thing or two. That's right. And please like the video. And subscribe if you can. And we'll see you next time on Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. <laughs>